Well, hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I'm Robin Carnahan, the Administrator of the General Services Administration, and I'm joined today by Dr. Maria Rosario Jackson, the head of the National Endowment for the Arts. Thank you so much for being with us at GSA today. We're here to talk about our art program at GSA. It turns out we own hundreds of pieces, thousands of pieces of public art, uh, and we're really excited to team up with NEA to figure out how to spread the word even more uh, to more artists around the country so that they can be part of this public art program. So welcome, and I'd love you to tell us just a little bit more about NEA. Thank you so much for having me, Administrator Carnahan. Um, delighted to be here. And the National Endowment for the Arts started over 50 years ago. Uh, it was started by uh, Congress. And uh, our charge is to make the arts available to all Americans. Um, we are a funder, we're a grant maker, but we're also a national resource uh, to help communities across the country bolster uh, arts, culture, and design in their communities. That's fantastic. Well, we, we are excited to be part of that. We, uh, one of the things that we do here is a thing called the Art and Architecture yes. Program, and it started uh, really kind of with the Kennedy administration, and then in 1972 was formalized, and basically it, it lets us spend um, one half of 1% of the cost of construction or rehabs, uh, major rehab projects on public art, which is incredible because it means we can do uh, art installations both inside buildings and outside buildings uh, that are owned by the public. And so we've been able to do this all over the country. We've got about, uh, as I said, like thousands of pieces of art in different buildings around the country. I was in Philadelphia not long ago uh, and dedicated a piece by a Philadelphia artist named Mo Brooker. Uh, it was fantastic and uh, it, it, it really was vibrant and huge and made a big difference in this public building. Tell me if you like, tell me a little bit about your experience with public art and you have any favorites? Well, you know, my background is actually in urban planning okay. and I've been uh, working at the intersection of arts and urban planning for decades. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I feel like public art is such a critically important way of how we connect with each other, mm -hmm. um, how we truly make public assets public, uh, how they're part of not just our physical infrastructure, but our civic infrastructure as well, how they can tell our stories, um, how they can provoke conversations that are generative and interesting and take us to the next level of understanding each other. So I think public art is incredibly important and the opportunity to have this program with you uh, and be able to have this kind of presence in public buildings mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah, so we're, we're just eager to figure out how to broaden the net, right? And that's why the collaboration with NEA is so important for us is to, is to really reach out to artists who might not know about this program. I have uh, friends uh, back home in Missouri who, who are artists, and when I mention this to them, they, they know nothing about it. So one of the things we're really encouraging people to do is sign up for the artist registry. It's, a, it's the way that we know who the artists are, and uh, we can then reach out to them when there are projects in their communities. I was out recently in, uh, in Toledo, and there's a new courthouse construction that's going on, and it was really fun to have one of the judges who's in charge of overseeing the project there show me the, the mock-ups that the artists had, had uh, provided to them and they're getting community feedback on that. And, and so it's, it's good to be able to have folks in the community come together and think about what would be meaningful for them. I was down in Texas not long ago at another uh, courthouse where local, local artists, again, were, were given an opportunity to have these giant big public installations. Yeah. And I know it means a lot for their careers, so we're eager to do more of that. It's meaningful in so many ways, in addition to, to being significant to artists' careers. You know, the, the, the beauty of public art is that so often it's not just the thing at the end, you know, the thing that gets installed or uh, the thing that for years people come to revisit, uh, which of course is important. But what's also important, I think as you're pointing out, is the process mm -hmm. um, and how often artists that are working in the public art realm really are engaged with community and they're um, influenced, informed. Um, they really are delivering something through a co-creative process at times that makes uh, what, what turns out to be the art piece so much more significant and valuable and meaningful. 
Yeah, I asked about the, the piece in uh, Philadelphia because it just fits so nicely. The, the building is right next to uh, where the Constitution was written and it has lots of meaning. The Liberty Bell is right there. And, and to be able to you know, understand how the community decided on that piece of art that they had had folks from local universities and arts institutions and groups be on the selection committee. And so you, as you're right, it's just a great collaboration with the community. Um, I'm interested to like, just get your thoughts on what, how, do we, how do we really reach these artists? This is not, thinking about the business of art is not always what artists are doing. Uh, how do we make it easy for them to, to get involved in this? You know, uh, I'm so grateful that the National Endowment for the Arts has so many relationships mm -hmm. with um, just thousands of arts organizations all over the country. So the ability to have that kind of uh, reach and contact with a broad range uh, of artists from many diverse um, traditions uh, to be able to connect with them through the organizations that they may have affiliation with. Of course, the registry that mm -hmm. you described, uh, once they get on that registry, um, you know, opportunities became, begin to be more available. Using our networks, which include state arts organizations, regional arts organizations, and all kinds of nonprofits, uh, as well as local arts agencies to get the word out about these opportunities is something we're really excited about. That's great. Are there other federal agencies that you're involved with that do a similar thing? Mm, there are other federal agencies that we have collaborations with. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the kind of collaboration we have with you, but we do work in the realm of health mm -hmm. um, and community development, uh, arts education. Uh, so these partnerships with other federal agencies are actually one of the ways in which we help to advance mission. Mm -hmm. um, by connecting with colleagues like you that, uh, that understand the power of the arts and, and how it can help us all achieve our goals. Well, I, w I will say again that like, there's a lot of money that has been passed recently in Congress for infrastructure. Some of that is gonna be something we do at GSA. We're focused primarily in that part of the infrastructure bill on land border crossings, so ports yeah. of entry and we'll be uh, in investing in upgrading 26 of those on both the northern and southern borders. Um, and we're gonna be looking to put art in those projects. So any artists who are interested in, in that area, don't forget to sign up for the registry. I, I learned something really funny I, to me a few years ago. So I learned that, that we are the keepers of a lot of Peter Max psychedelic art that was in border crossings back in the 1970s. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that again, but uh, it's just a show that, you know, as we wanted to have artists that reflect the times they're living in. And one of the things that's so great about uh, our program is that we focus on living artists, yes. right? So we try to bring them into public art. We've been doing this for 50 years now, so we've got quite a collection. Well, and I'm excited that there will be more to include in your collection and that there will be representation from artists from all different walks of life. Um, and the ability to have a piece in, in a public building um, and really add one's voice or the voice of a community to that space, um, it really is contributing to our social fabric um, and it's creating a bit of history. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, so to have that opportunity, I think, is just a, a wonderful, wonderful thing to extend to artists who are so important to, uh, I think, all of us reaching our full potential as a nation. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for thanks for being here with us today. Thank you. Uh, and for this collaboration. You I'm know, excited about it. it. It's it's not something you get to do every day, and most people don't know that we have one of the biggest art collections in, in the world right here at the General Services Administration, and it's public art. So if I'm an artist, tell me, what, what is the next step? What do I need to do? Well, there have been a series of webinars that have been filmed that explain the program, uh, give artists instruction about how to sign up for the registry, um, say a little bit about the history of, of our collaboration and of, of the work at the GSA. And uh, the webinars can be found at our website at the National Endowment for the Arts. Terrific, well, that's great. So artists, next call to action is go sign up, get yourself on the artist registry and We'll be sure to let you know what uh, opportunities are coming up. Thanks for joining us.